Hi, my name is Miranda Olsman. I'm a graduate student at San Francisco State, hopefully finishing up my master's in spring 2013. I'm here today to share with you a little about how I found my way into critical fat studies, what I believe the importance is both to myself and to communication studies and performance studies, and then I will share a piece with you. Uh, so my first brush, I'll call it with fat studies, was about 10 years ago when I was first an undergraduate and I was playing rugby and I just finished doing judo and I was at Borders and I thought I'm going to just look at magazines and I saw a magazine that had, I can't even remember what magazine it was, but the article was about fat activism. And I remember thinking to myself, ew, what, what do fat people have to be active about? Um, and I'd always had trouble with my weight and been told that fat was wrong and it was bad. So seeing the idea that there were fat activists out there just, it didn't occur to me that that would be a, something to be an activist about. And so I brushed it off. I didn't think about it after that until about seven years later and I started doing graduate school and I was at a conference with... Jesus, who you saw perform earlier, and he was telling me about this panel about embodied interventions and that he and Benny were working on it, and I thought, God, that sounds really interesting. Um, by this time, I had really gotten to know my body a lot better and had experienced a lot more around fat and was much more critical around fat than I had been at 20, and I wanted to ask Jesus really badly, like, I would love to join you on that panel, but I didn't know the etiquette. Later, Benny walks up to us and goes, hey, Miranda, are you interested? And I thought, yes. Uh, and Jesus had not wanted to ask me right out because he wasn't sure how I'd feel about being asked about living in a fat body. And it was one of those conversations that was a very quick conversation, but I realized how incredibly important it was that two people who identify as fat, who identify as activists, both had a hard time talking to each other about it. And so this was where I believe that my work started to delve into fat studies more and my interests started to cross. And my specific interests lie a lot in athleticism and being fat. Uh, for example, this semester I, do an, I, I teach an introduction to public speaking course and I do an activity where I let my students do identity maps so they can guess at all different pieces of my identity. And at one point they guessed about disability. And one of the students raises his hand and says, please don't hate me, but obese. And another student responded with, no, she's athletic. And another student responded with, no, she's stylish. And I thought, well, can't I be all three? I can both be fat and athletic, but to my students' minds, this was a completely separate way of being. And I participated in athletics my entire life. Uh, and have always really enjoyed them. And actually, my size and my strength has often come in handy. So it occurs to me that work that I've done and work that I'm doing has a tendency to revolve around my own body and athletics with the hope that it will reach other people who are interested in being fat leads. So the piece I want to share with you today is a piece that's unnamed but talking about judo and the fat body. According to Jigoro Kano, the founder of Kodokan Judo, Judo is the way to most effective use of both physical and spiritual strength. By training you in attacks and defenses, it refines your body and your soul and helps you make the spiritual essence of Judo a part of your very being. In this way, you are able to perfect yourself and contribute something of value to the world. This is the final goal of Judo discipline. Anyone who intends to follow the way of Judo must above instill this in his heart. And that's from the founder of Judo. I grew up as an almost team athlete, a place where my father's dreams of having a son went to die. I also grew up with a southern mother who felt that fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and okra were as a way of life. And my parents would constantly argue that one wasn't feeding me healthy enough. I began to order larger portions of food so that my parents who stole food off my plate would still get some too and I would eat a lot. I learned to hide my food so I could have more. I watched my dad shove fries by three into his mouth from my Happy Meal, but my body and health was never mentioned to me. 
That is until I hit fourth grade, and she took me to the doctor because she felt as though I was getting too large for my age. They weren't very worried about my body. They had an idea of weight that my body was supposed to come to because of my years. I was sitting in the doctor's office, and he said, laughing, If you don't watch out, you're going to hit 140 one day. I remember hitting 140 and thinking, fuck off. I'm still fine. And then my dad saw me in a nightshirt one day and said, Oh, your thighs touch. I didn't realize you had gotten so fat. I didn't realize it either. Tayatoshi is translated into English as body drop and is defined as you balance your own body on your extended right foot and using both arms rhythmically together, send your opponent reeling to the side, the front, or the rear. You will find that many opportunities to apply this technique pop up and it's very useful in counterattacks and follow-up attacks. Since the movements involved are fairly simple, if you don't make the drop pay the first time, you can repeat it over and over again. This is one of the best points of the body drop. I got kicked off the basketball team for smoking a cigar. I noticed my waistline growing but began enjoying my curves and never connected food and my growth until others did. I started to notice the stares from people, which created my new world of secret eating. In front of people, I chose a salad and a piece of chicken. I often joked that I just wasn't very hungry. But when I got home, I always had an hour to myself. I would create a plate of snack food, ritualistically. I would start by popping a large bag of buttery popcorn. Then while it was pop popping, I would toast a Pop-Tart. When the popcorn finished up, I would pour it into a bowl, smacking the bottom of the bag until each kernel landed in the bowl. Ding! The toaster would go off, and I would pull the Pop-Tart from it and slowly butter the bottom until it dripped. The meal was completed by a Diet Pepsi, of course. After all, a lady has to watch her calories, I thought. I would go through the food like I hadn't eaten all day, sucking each kernel until the butter was gone. Then I would slowly hide the packaging at the bottom of the garbage so that my dad could only see the Diet Pepsi can. It felt like safety. Katagruma is translated into English as shoulder whirl and is defined as you get underneath your opponent's body, rest him on both shoulders, stand, and throw him forward. I enjoy food. I enjoy the preparation of food, the slow cutting and dicing and slicing that preparing food can bring, the bubbling top of butter as you prepare it for a sauce. My favorite thing, though, to make is a poached egg. To make them properly, you butter the whole pot and boil the water. You then crack an egg or two into a small dish and slip them into the water as it bubbles. They take a watchful eye to make sure they don't overcook. I feel like that watchful eye is on me in a different way. Have you ever trained for an elite sport? I have. You train daily, never taking your focus off of the next competition for anything. Judo values size. It values strength and an ability to devour. While the judoka must be practiced, judo also requires a lot of intuition and trust within the body. Your body requires you to pay attention to it and to learn what she needs. For that moment in space, judo transformed my way of eating to a way of living to perform. I regimented myself and it became a routine. At 7 a.m., I ate four egg whites and two pieces of sausage. At lunch, I ate half a chicken breast and one cup of broccoli. At 4, I weight trained for two hours while drinking a protein water. From 6.30 to 9, my time belonged to judo. At judo, after judo, I would eat a chicken breast and salad, slowly chopping the chicken breast so one piece matched each bite of lettuce. The next morning, I would wake up and do the same. For this moment... This one moment in history, I used few food to fuel my judoka frame, each portion adding to a throw I would do that would slam an opponent into the ground. My body imagined itself as wonderfully fed and strong. Others didn't see this transformation, though. People around me asked incredulously, You're a national athlete? When talking to a nutritionist about trying to gain muscle mass, she suggested I take in less calories because I was still too large for my frame. I could bench press 200 pounds, leg press 500, and throw a six-foot-tall man over my head. I had national medals, local golds, and people kept suggesting I take in less protein and do less weight training so I could look more feminine. Case that got to me is translated into English as scarfold and is defined as 
an easy technique to get into. It is generally considered difficult to master. On the other hand, once you have mastered its vital pants, it will enable you to stand up to a strapper who's bigger than you and not give in. So that's all for the performance piece. Uh, I think I wanted to share that piece because lately I've been thinking a lot about what it means to be an athlete. It's normally a much more physical piece. I demonstrate the different judo techniques and the warm-ups that I would do during judo uh, just to demonstrate to an audience what a large body is capable of doing. Um, but I recently pinched a nerve in my back and it's really taken some getting used to to slow down my body and my recent visit to the doctor's office and all she could do is look at my charts, look at me, look at my charts, look at me and say, oh, your blood pressure is okay. Completely shocked. And when I called her out on it, she said, oh, we just have a little bit of a misunderstanding. And she wasn't very interested in hearing about the sports I played or what I've done or how it was possible that I could have injured my back. She just kept telling me to lose weight. So uh, at the moment, being athletic and being fat have really been on my mind and what it is to live in this body. Thank you.